All right, in this video, we're going to look at two examples of a distance, rate, and time problem. Uh, one example involves some vehicles traveling in opposite directions right there. And the other example involves somebody trying to play catch up. So uh, though the tables will have some similarities, the way we set up our equations will be different. So let's have a look at this first example. Two truck drivers leave a cafe at the same time traveling in opposite directions. One truck goes seven miles per hour faster than the other one. After four hours, they are 404 miles apart. How fast is each truck going? We have two vehicles here. We have a slow truck and we have a fast truck. Now the question that we're trying to answer is we're trying to find out how fast each truck is going. So we don't know what these speeds are. This is where we need to assign a variable. Let's say that the slow truck speed is X and if the slow truck speed is X miles per hour. The faster truck is going seven miles per hour faster than the slow one. So if the slow one is X, the fast one is going to be the slow truck speed plus seven. That's what this sentence means right here. One truck goes seven miles per hour faster than the other. So if the slow truck speed is X miles per hour, we can take X and add seven to it to get the fast truck speed. Now, time, how long did these trucks travel for? It says they traveled for four hours. After four hours, they are 404 miles apart. So we had the same amount of time for each one. And now for our distance, we don't want to deal with the 404 just yet. To fill, fill in this distance piece, recall that the formula for distance is rate times the time is equal to the distance. So we want to do just that. We want to take this rate, multiply it times this time, x times 4, therefore we have 4x. And let's do the same thing for the other one. This rate times this time, I'm going to write that as 4 times x plus 7. Don't forget your distributive property there since you have one term times two terms. Now, how do we form our equation with these two pieces? Well, let's draw a little picture to show what's going on. Um, we have the slow truck and the fast truck. They leave a cafe. Let's say this dot is the cafe. The slow truck goes in one direction and the fast truck goes in the opposite direction. That's what it says right there. They travel in opposite directions. Now I'm making one line longer because this, the faster truck will go farther than the slower truck. But after four hours have passed, the slow truck is here, or excuse me, the fast truck is here and the slow truck is here. The distance between these two vehicles at this time is 400 four miles. So therefore, if we look at the picture above it, neither one of these trucks travel the total 404 miles. The 404 miles is a combination of the slow truck's distance and the fast truck's distance. So if we add these two distances together, look at these two lines. If we take this line plus this line, we get the whole line of 404. That's exactly what you want to do here. You want to take these two distances. You want to take the slow truck's distance, which is that red line, plus the fast truck's, fast truck's difference, distance, which is the green line. Add those together. So we have 4x, which is that, plus this distance here, 4 times x plus 7. This is equal to the total distance, which is 404. And now let's solve this equation. So we have 4x plus, use your distributive property, you have 4x plus 28, and this is equal to 404. Combine like terms, 4x plus 4x is 8x, bring down your 28, this is equal to 404. Subtract the 28 from both sides, and 404 minus 28, that is equal to 376. This is going to be equal to just the 8x now because those 28s cancel out. And now let's divide both sides by 8 to get x by itself and you have x is equal to 47. 
What does that 47 mean? Well, look back up here in your chart. X equals 47. Therefore, this X is going to be 47. That is the slow truck's speed, 47 miles per hour. Well, what about the fast truck speed? The problem said one truck went 7 miles per hour faster than the other. Well, that's exactly what we have right here. If we plug 47 into X, 47 plus 7, that's going to be 54 miles per hour for the fast truck. Therefore, let's come back and write an answer down in a complete sentence. The slower truck traveled at a speed of 47 miles per hour and the faster truck traveled at a speed of 54 miles per hour. Now, let's check our work here. Here's the answer, but let's check our work and come back to this little this little mini diagram that I drew right here. This red line represented the distance that the red truck or the, the red truck, the slow truck traveled. This red line represents the distance that the slow truck traveled. Therefore, the slow truck traveled at 47 miles per hour for four hours. So right here, 47 times four. We're taking the speed times the time or the rate times the time. 47 times 4, that's going to be 188. That means the slow truck traveled 188 miles. Well, what about the fast truck? This green line represents the distance that the fast truck traveled. Therefore, we take 54 miles per hour times 4 hours. So 54 times 4, that's equal to 216. And that's 216 miles. So that's this distance. And since they were going in opposite directions, remember they were going, one was going this way, the other one was going this way. The sum of these two distances represents how far they are apart after four hours. And if you add these two distances together, 216 plus 188, you do get 404 miles. Just a way to check your work there. But that's the answer that we're looking for. The slower truck speed and the faster truck speed based on that question. The second problem. Now notice here, we added these two distances. You do not necessarily always do that. Let's look at this example to see what I'm talking about. So we have Ryan. Ryan left the Science Museum and drove south at a rate of 28 kilometers per hour. Jenna left three hours later driving 42 kilometers per hour faster in an effort to catch up to him. How long did Jenna tra have to travel to catch up with Ryan? So we got two folks here. We got Ryan and we have Jenna. Ryan's rate. What was Ryan's speed? Ryan traveled at a rate of 28 kilometers per hour. Be careful with Jenna's speed though. Jenna left three hours later driving 42 kilometers per hour faster. So not only, she didn't go 42 kilometers per hour, she went 42 kilometers per hour faster than Ryan's speed. So you need to add these two numbers together. 42 plus 28, Jenna's speed was 70 kilometers per hour because she went 42 kilometers per hour faster than Ryan did. Now, what about time? How do we fill in these two time pieces? Well, it says here that Jenna left three hours later. Three hours later, that's all we know about time. So let's assign a time to Ryan. Suppose Ryan traveled for T hours. If Jenna left three hours later, that's going to be three hours less that she travels compared to Ryan. Think about that. If Ryan traveled for five hours, Jenna left three hours later, which means she's only going to travel for two hours. Therefore, we can find Ryan's time T, we can subtract three from that to get Jenna's time. And again, that's because she left three hours later. And now recall your formula for rate, time, and distance. The rate times the time is equal to the distance, just like that first example. So let's multiply across. 28 times T is 28T. And then the 70 times t minus 3, I'm going to write that 70 with the t minus 3 in parentheses. 
Now let's look at a little diagram, kind of like what we did on the last example. We have Ryan. Ryan left first. He's already taken off. So Ryan's already gone a certain distance before Jenna even leaves. All right. So let's suppose this is what Ryan traveled that three hours before Jenna left. But when Jenna takes off, as Jenna takes off, Ryan is still traveling on along. But since Jenna is going at a faster speed, eventually she will catch up with him. So what are we really looking for here? When Jenna catches up with Ryan, even though she traveled a lesser or a shorter amount of time, um, their distances will be the same. That's when she catches up with him. When Jenna catches up with Ryan, those two distances will be the same. So what we want to do is we want to look at each one of these distances we have here. Since these two distances are going to be the same when Jenna catches up with Ryan, these two distances here must be set equal to each other. So let's do that. 28t is Ryan's distance. Set that equal to Jenna's distance, which is 70 times t minus 3. And let's solve this equation. We have 28t is equal to 70 times t using the distributive property. And then 7 or 70 times negative 3, that's minus 210. Now, I know I've mentioned in class, um, I, prefer, I prefer to move the smaller one to the bigger one, but hey, you can even move the bigger one to the smaller one if you like. Just be careful with your signs right there. So 28t minus 70t, that gives us negative 42t. And the reason why I did that is just so I can have something over here on this side, and we're left with negative 210 over here. Divide by negative 42 to get t by itself, and you end up with t is equal to 5. What does this mean? Well, look back at your chart. t is 5. Huh, lucky guess. I think I even said 5 up here a minute ago, but 5 hours is the time, or the, yeah, the time that Ryan traveled. So if Ryan traveled five hours, Jenna left three hours later, so Jenna only actually traveled for two hours to catch up to him. However, this is not the answer to the problem. Look at the question. How long did Jenna have to travel to catch up with Ryan? Which one of these do we want to use? How long? Well, Jenna had to travel for two hours. Ryan traveled for five, but it said how long did Jenna have to travel? So it'll be two hours. Now, the more I read this, so I'm going to type this in. Jenna traveled for two hours to catch up with Ryan. I'm not going to lie to you. The way this is worded, how long, I mean, you can almost perceive that as a distance. How long did Jenna have to travel? You might think, well, long, that could be a distance. Huh? Well, how far did they travel? Let's check our work here. So 28 times 5, what was Ryan's distance? His speed was 28, his time was 5, so 28 times 5 is going to be 140 kilometers. What about Jenna's distance? It should be the same thing since we set these two distances equal to each other. Let's double check this. Jenna's speed was 70. She traveled for two hours and 70 times two is equal to 140. So hey, better safe than sorry. Um, yeah, Jenna, Jenna traveled a shorter time because she was going faster. So to make this sentence answer this question, no matter how we perceive this, how long, she traveled for two hours to catch up with Ryan comma, traveling a distance of 140 kilometers. They both traveled that. That's when she caught up. But again, that whole idea, the way this is worded, how long, you could either perceive that as time, she traveled for two hours, or you could perceive how long as, you know, how long of a distance did she travel. She traveled 140 kilometers. She traveled the same distance he did, but the time is different. So the two things to look for here, if somebody is trying to play catch up, what you're typically going to do is you're going to set these two distances equal to each other. And that's exactly what we did right here. 
Whereas back here in this first example, um, when you have two things going in opposite directions, or they could almost be heading towards each other, I recommend you look for the snail problem. The snail problem is very similar to this. But when things travel in opposite directions, you want to add these two distances. That's what we did right here and right here. And you set it equal to the distance that they are apart. And that's what we did back in this first example. So two examples covering distance, rate, and time. And that's it for this video. Hope it helped.